an urban society, a need for cash, a new way of life, the first challenge. The Industrial Revolution transformed the economy of the United States. The farmers of the day became factory workers and left an era of trading for services, moving into a new age of wages and salaries. As the need for consumer credit followed, Frank Mackey knew he could fill it. In 1878, he began making personal loans from the back room of a Minneapolis jewelry store, meeting the everyday needs of everyday people. He met the challenge of the times by creating an opportunity, one that was to have unimaginable success. It wasn't long before Mackey's business grew out of the jewelry store and into the first office devoted exclusively to making loans. More branch offices followed, creating a new need, centralized supervision. Mackey again rose to the challenge with a move to Chicago, where he set up headquarters for his growing company. At about the same time, the mid-1890s, there was a new challenge, changing the traditional term loans to installment loans. Mackey saw installment loans as a benefit for customers and a benefit for his company. These innovative loans represented an opportunity that soon every finance company adopted. With paid up customers on his books, Mackey created another opportunity for his growing company. Mail solicitations were tried for the first time, offering additional credit to good customers. This early recognition of a valuable source of new business continues today with households cross-selling of products and services. A fledgling industry, greed, business profits, the challenge of change. The new consumer finance industry was established and successful by the turn of the century. But it also had its problems, abuses such as high interest rates, unfair charges for loans, and harsh collection tactics gave the industry a bad name and resulted in restrictive laws. While regulation wasn't always desirable from a business standpoint, Frank Mackey recognized that it was necessary if the industry was to continue doing business. His longtime associate Frank Hubachek took the challenge of negative legislation and created an opportunity, working with the Russell Sage Foundation in the development of positive laws that were to govern consumer credit. In part because of these laws, the years between 1916 and 1925 saw tremendous expansion of the company, with 33 branch offices opening across the United States. Outstanding loans grew to $6.5 million, and the company incorporated. The new name was Household Finance Corporation, suggested by an employee. While the company was growing, the memory of the earlier abuses in the industry still had not completely faded, another challenge for the company. The opportunity to change these negative perceptions came in the form of lowering interest rates. Household lowered its rates by almost one-third, becoming the first company to set rates lower than the legal maximum. What an opportunity it turned out to be. By the end of 1929, earnings increased 46% and loan account doubled. The crash, unemployment, uncertainty, a challenge to survive. Everyone suffered during these years, including household, and that was the challenge. Consumers still needed credit, and stockholders needed confidence in the health of the company. Even in the darkest times, household continued to pay dividends and kept making loans. The company continued to lead, becoming the first in the industry in 1929 to be listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Growth was still a priority, and new offices were open to continue meeting customers' needs. But providing money to consumers wasn't enough. In these hard times, even a family that had been financially stable could become shaky. It was important for consumers to know how to manage their dollars and get the most they could from what was available. That challenge, changing consumer spending habits, became a new opportunity for household. 
a newly created consumer education department took on the responsibility of teaching families how to get out of debt and budget efficiently. The company was ensuring its investment by helping customers become good customers. Consumer education became today's Money Management Institute, the longest running program of its kind. The help provided through millions of booklets and audiovisual programs has shown countless customers and non-customers how to cope with financial responsibility. At the same time Household was helping customers, it was getting to know them very well. Detailed statistical analyses of the customer base, begun in 1932, continues today, making Household a leader in understanding who its customers are. Armed with that information, Household was able to better target its products and serve its markets. As the Depression years dragged on, Household's commitment to grow continued. A landmark acquisition, though small, signaled the company's entry into the international marketplace. The two branch offices of Central Finance in Toronto, Canada, became part of Household's operations in 1933. This drive for new markets to tap and new customers to serve would be repeated again and again in the U.S. and abroad throughout Household's history. The war years, returning veterans, demand for credit, the challenge of prosperity. As businesses experienced post-war growth, so did Household. Outstanding loans doubled in about three years and totaled $200 million in 1949. This kind of expansion and success required a unifying symbol. Now with the familiar Circle logo, customers everywhere would identify Household and its service to customers. The strong, healthy company known as Household Finance was not content with the status quo. The challenge was how to generate more profit without jeopardizing the stable base of customers. The opportunity was in improving operations and finding new ways to expand business and attract customers. Never borrow money needlessly just when you must then borrow through the oldest company from folks you trust. Although the business end of HFC was enormously successful, its size in many locations made management a challenge. During these boom years, an operations manual was written to standardize everything from handling accounts and evaluating job performance to the decor of branch offices. Later, computerized operations helped streamline the management process, providing more accurate information for the company and better service for customers. Credit life insurance became an important source of income for HFC, protecting both customers and the company. New customers became part of the household family through programs such as Education Funds Incorporated, designed to help families pay for their children's educations. New customers were also reached through more acquisitions in Canada. HFC was now bringing its products and services to more and more consumers. In 1959, HFC opened its 1,000th branch office in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, a landmark event because of the company's growth and also because it was the first office of its kind in the suburbs. Prosperity, regulation, a need to change, a challenge to grow. This was a time of diversity, not only in locations, but also in businesses. Household faced two challenges, managing the cycles of business as well as the regulatory constraints which restricted our growth in financial services. The opportunity was entering new industries that would offset the cyclical nature of business and at the same time create a larger base of operations.